Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jay Campbell and Jim Brown of TRTRevolution.com. And of course, we are joined by Brian Cron here today to answer your questions. And the next question that we have is a really good question. And I'm going to let Jim start it off because um, this is actually a sensitive question um, in the community for people that are using testosterone replacement therapy in therapeutic fashion because a lot of doctors unfortunately get this wrong. And we are here today. Not to say that we're doctors, and again, we always just claim we're not doctors, and we're not even playing them on the internet, but it's important to know that when you're working with a doctor uh, with TRT that you should be aware of this. Anyway, the, the question is, um, you know, Jay and Jim, go in, as, go in as little as depth as possible to discuss how CIRMS and or a, an AI and aromatase inhibitor can affect your cholesterol negatively. And by, what, and by the process, we're not going to talk about the process, but his question is, in the process by how they do that and why we need to keep their dosages to a minimum. You know, follow that, Jim? Yeah, well, a couple things. So we talk about HRT with optimizing anti-aging, all those things. And so that would include improving your blood lipids, optimizing your blood work, decreased vascular inflammation, having your hormones within the right physiological levels, right? So we want testosterone in the right level. We want estrogen in the right levels. And when they're outside of those norms, shit happens, right? That stuff happens. And so that's one of the things with AIs you have to be careful with because a lot of guys will take a, a dosage and it's too strong right away and it completely wipes out your estrogen. Right. So then you have to suffer through that and that is suffering. Or they don't take it when they need it. Um, but whenever you take an anti-estrogen, there's going to be a cost for it. And almost universally, not everyone, but almost universally, we see a negative re reaction to blood lipids, meaning either cholesterol goes up, HDL goes down, LDLs go up. That's not everybody, but um, I would say universally that's a concern. So the goal is to use just amount of anti-estrogen as you need if you need it. Right. To keep you within the normal, the physiological range that you are symptom-free, being within not too low of estrogen, not too high of estrogen, and Again, if you're reducing that dose and taking as minimally as possible, then you're reducing the, the exposure to your blood lipids. So it's, it's a balancing act. And the physicians that we like or the physicians that we prefer to work with are guys who will start out therapy and not just blatantly prescribe a dosage of AI in, say, C in six weeks. Right. Typically, it's a start on your testosterone therapy. We'll see you in three to four weeks to see what happens with your blood. Um, we're going to check testosterone. We're going to check estrogen again, and then treat the estrogen if needed. Well said. Very, very well said. Um, I'll just add, and then Brian, you know, feel free to jump in here in a second. But I'll just add, um, it's very, very important um, that when you start TRT with again with a licensed and hopefully very progressive physician, whoever she or he may be, um, that they do not initiate any. Uh, med med uh, medications or you know chemicals or compounds into your bloodstream other than the primary one which is obviously testosterone okay because until you establish a medical slash clinical need for the additional compounds meaning an aromatase inhibitor potentially to suppress estrogen a serum which is a selective estrogen receptor modulator to also potentially modulate estrogen um, you don't need them started until you do. And what I mean by that, and Jim already hit the nail on the head, is blood work has to prove a clinical need. So when you start TRT, and unfortunately we see this happen far too often, many doctors will just gunshot start you on testosterone and AI and possibly HCG and other things that are basically you know, disrupting um, the, the, the homeostatic mechanism that your central nervous system and obviously your endocrine system has um, due to all those chemicals being inserted at the one time. So how do you control variables? Well, you can't. So it's very, very important that you work with a physician who can look at all or everything from a baseline standpoint. How are you going to do that? Well, you initiate testosterone first. It doesn't really matter the delivery system. I mean, obviously, we recommend injections for blood stability reasons. But the truth is, is that one chemical at a time until other chemicals are necessary. And you won't know what else is necessary until the blood work proves that you're necessary. Now, the only caveat that I'll say, and obviously I write about this in the book and we always default to the book, if you're a fat person, meaning you're obese and you have really high body fat and you have already the likelihood that your body is overproducing aromatase, which is the enzyme responsible for the conversion into estrogen in the body, 
And it's uh, sometimes a good medicine for a doctor to prescribe you a super low, like I mean low, microdose, and I'm not going to give dosages because we're not doctors here, um, of an AI, like a Remedex, like a Romicin, um, to, to, to modulate any kind of overproduction of, of aromatase due to your testosterone and your high body fat. But that's the only case, really, where I can justify or I can say to you that it's important that you might need both of those chemicals at the outset versus just having testosterone. And, and as Jim knows, you know, we work with the fine guys at Checked, you know, which is Checked, C-H-E-K dot com forward slash TRT Revolution. Awesome company to do your HRT and TRT with. They come to your house. They take your blood right at your house. They also will provide a physical right at your home or your office. So, I mean, it's a great company. Obviously, we highly value them and we're you know, working with them and recommending them. And people like that, even those guys for the most part, they're going to look at a person who's obese at about three weeks in, maybe four weeks in, and they're going to see. And, and obviously, if you're the patient, you start suffering from estrogenic effects because of your own fat and you're on testosterone and those things are happening, well, then, of course, you're probably going to need an AI. But that's, that's the most important thing. The thing that Jim didn't talk about that I'll just briefly mention is um, – if you push your estrogen too low because you, again, have a guy shotgunning you in AI and giving you a massive dosage at the start, it can lead to a lot of problems. Number one, sexual dysfunction. You are literally going to be a unit. And you see guys with two and three and one levels, and some guys we've seen, we've seen below, um, you know, with an E2 level, an estradiol level, then that means you've got problems. And as Jim said, you're going to suffer until you get back into the, to the baseline normal range. It also screws up uh, bone mineral density and can lower HDL. There's no proof in that. There's some studies that say that there's a correlation, but we've seen it in, in experimenting, or not experimenting, but anecdotally listening and, and hearing guys' stories and then seeing their blood work. So anyway, that that's it's very, very important and crucial to balance, to keep balance between estrogen and testosterone, and that's why you're not going to insert anything until you get to that level. Brian, do you want to add anything? No, I, obviously, I just, that's, <laughs> with you two guys on, it's, it's hard for me to follow, but... Um, <laughs> But I just wanted to ask, you know, you know, one of the one of the things I always hear is that, you know, the old school dudes, like the Golden Age guys, you know, the Arnold's era and all that, you know, they never used an AI. They never concerned themselves with estrogen. And, you know, and contrary to what people believe, they were into a lot of testosterone. So, like, what is the deal there? Like, why, if they didn't need that... Like, well, I, I can I can touch on that, Brian. I mean, my whole, you know, I was a competitive bodybuilder and for a very, you know, more than 10 years, probably a 14 year span that I was using a, let's just say out of the HRT range of anabolics, I never touched AI. I never had a symptom, um, no side effect, nothing that would warrant that. Now, I, I did try to dry out more when I, when I um, would prepare for a contest. And it crashed my crashed my estrogen levels, and I felt you know like total crap. I mean, I really crashed, had the flu, all that stuff. Um, that's associated with a low estrogen level, and so for me, I never had the need for it. Um, you know, talking to a lot of guys, we're in the same boat. Um, you know, we would try it to try to dry out more and experiment with that way, and it didn't seem to help any. Um, and so for for a lot of people, I don't think that everybody has to be on it. And of course. You know, we're talking about testosterone that was in a very high range and then an estrogen that was in a high range, but relative to the testosterone um, wasn't an issue. Well, right. uh, for me now, being on, on hormone replacement, legit hormone replacement therapy levels um, for the fat past six, seven years, um, I don't have a need for AI. Right. I've used it intermittently. Um, and then when I figured out my dosage and splitting my dosage up, you know, a lot of guys know that I've tried every day and every other day injections. And that keeps my um, estrogen level so low that I, I don't have a need for it. And so I think some people are going to have to use it. Right. Some people aren't. And, and some of the people that we've, you know, had access to and working with them, them and their physician, some of them are super sensitive right. where they're taking like a quarter milligram of a, of a aromacin and it's crashing their estrogen levels. Yeah. For two weeks. So, so Everybody, like Jim said, everybody's totally different. Jim, there's a great answer. I mean, we're all biochemically unique. It's like, again, I'll default to the book. It's very important that you work with a physician and you're undergoing TRT, HRT that can provide you a script to these chemicals, ancillary medications when necessary. Because as Jim said, as we age, and remember, this is a lifelong application. This isn't some 
you're going to go on and off, you know. So when you age and things change metabolically, biochemically, biologically in your body, you may, you know, at 50 need an AI, whereas, you know, at 40 you didn't. So, and, or and maybe that, 60. And that brings us back to the point about um, selecting a physician, man, and, and the right physician. You know, if you're, if you just go into, and this is anything, if you just walk into a physician's office and they hand you a script, okay, this is what I give everybody to start on this. That's a little scary, especially when with hormonal replacement therapy. And so that's personally, I like it when a physician starts me out gradual or very conservatively and then retest and we kind of titrate those dosages in rather than here's your script. This is what I start everybody on. See you in six weeks, kid. Uh, because that's concerning because some of these guys, some guys are just going to fall into that and they're not going to have an issue. And then as we all know, there's some guys that need that fine tuning. And so, so that's, you know, that's just part of why we're here to, to help you educate picking the right physician. I mean, that's, that's what it comes down to. And, and Brian, one more thing to your point. And by the way, this is a 10 minute video, but it's great because we covered a lot, <laughs> we covered a lot of ground in this video and there's a lot of guys who are going to find value in this, but um, I, I would just add that, you know, when you're talking about the bodybuilder community, you're talking about the elite of the elite, right? They're already genetically predisposed to have high muscle or high, a lot of androgen receptors, a lot of muscle yeah, yeah. and low body fat due to genetics and also their lifestyle. So again, that stands to reason Gemini's theory that very, when you're dialed in again, again, I'll default to the book when you're dialed in, right? And TRT is just one component, one pillar, but when you're dialed in with you know, your diet and your exercise and you have low body fat and all the other lifestyle factors that lead to that, you don't need an AI. There's very few times, to, you know, are you going to need an AI? Now, Jim's right. There are people that are sensitive. We do work with guys. We know people that are sensitive, even with low body fat. But they're they're the exception. They are the outlier. And so, and you know, and I know Nelson Virgil agrees with me too on this. And, and some of the leaders in the community, you know, we do. We all agree with this. Now, again, there's going to be doctors that are going to you know shit in our mouth and say, "Oh, you can't do that." You know, I'm not going to name one doctor's name. He's a close personal friend of mine, but he prescribes an AI concomitantly with this testosterone in all of his patients. And that's the way he rolls. And he, he measures labs and he keeps them in balance, keeps them within a range. But, you know, it's just like, you know, my, my take is always why induce a chemical change to the body when it's not necessary? Yeah. Don't induce another chemical into the regimen or the array of your biochemistry until there's a clinical proven need. So, you know, I think that's, that's it for that.